What's up, everyone? My name is Edson Cardona, and I want to welcome you guys to the Hashtag Let's Kick the Series. On these episodes, we get the pleasure to be joined by professional athletes, get a little insight on their background and how they made it this far in their athletic careers. A conversation between athletes about their journeys, leading them to success. I hope you guys enjoy. What's up, everyone? How y'all doing? My name is Edson Cardona. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Hashtag Let's Kick It series. For those who have joined before, welcome back. For those who, for those who are joining for the first time, welcome. On this episode, I get the pleasure to introduce Max Ornstill. The home calendar. Off the corner, kick right to Ornstill. Equalizer. Max Ornstill. Heads it home. Max played for Deanza Force Academy, born in Oakland, California, played for Santa Clara University, and now is playing his fourth season at Timbers 2. Um, pleasure to have him. I actually was able to play with him as well, so he's going to be joining us whenever he can, hopefully soon. What up? What's up, brother? What's cracking? Good, man. You know, hanging in there, doing all right. Yeah. Happy to be talking to you. How's this coronavirus treating you, man? It's crazy. Um, it was definitely super crazy at first, and now it's kind of, it's kind of just life as we know it. So, uh, you know, I've gotten into a, a bit of a routine these days. So, trying to make the most of it, but hopefully get back to playing. You know against some people and with with yeah. some people soon so we'll see that's great man i'm glad you're able to be part of this uh this series man i'm glad you're here and thank you for your time of course of course yeah, thanks for having me we'll get started man so when did your journey as a footballer start man um i mean i think both my parents were huge athletes and so i think you know i think when I was just a baby, my parents were giving me football, soccer balls, baseballs, basketballs. Um, but uh, I just see my dad put a comment there, <laughs> of course. Hey, dad. Um, hey, dad. But my, my, sister, my sister started playing, uh, I think, rec soccer under eights. And I'm three years younger than her. So I was probably four or five at the time when I would go to her practices and start kicking the ball around and running around. And then yeah. from there... The rest is history. Yeah, man, that's awesome. So you you really figured out, like, at what age you think when you figured out, like, hey, like, soccer is kind of the passion I want to go for and not, yeah. like, all the other sports that you're playing. Yeah. Um, so I played Little League Baseball when I was, like, eight or nine, and then eventually soccer took over from that. Um, I played basketball in middle school, and then soccer took over from that. Um, I actually was really into skateboarding end of middle school or early high school. Uh, <laughs> I was debating quitting soccer to be a skater, but then awesome. I just love soccer too much. It was just part of my life and I couldn't get enough of it. I think around, I think probably sophomore year of high school, I was, I, I came to the realization that soccer is, you know, by far the number one sport and I need to dedicate all my time and energy to that if I want to make you know my dream of playing professionally come true yeah that's awesome because you figured out at that age like all right that's that's that step you had to take you know step away yeah. from the skateboarding and turn it into <laughs> soccer you know which yeah. is great though because some kids you know they don't understand or they don't figure that out till later on in their in their uh in their careers um yeah so how'd you uh, know that it was going to be more of like professional, you know, how'd you know you can take that step and being with the elite and no yeah. longer being it, not like a hobby, but like the sport that you love, you know? Yeah. Um, I think growing up, um, I always had, I think so many kids have the dream of 
playing a professional sport. Um, yeah. And I think, I mean, I think if you ask me from in any grade I was K through 12, what do you want to be when you grow up? I think my answer would have been a professional soccer player. Um, and a lot of people would look at me crazy or be like, Oh, no one watches soccer in the U S and I would always be like, Oh, well it's growing. Or I would, I would, <laughs> I would stick to my guns, you know, cause that's, you know, at the end of the day, that was the answer, whether or not it was going to come true or not. I didn't know, but that was, that was the ultimate goal for me. And, um, I forgot what the question was, but when did I realize I wanted to put what that that was the goal or yeah no you can turn into a professional like was it after college okay. or was it before college so, or... I mean that's the thing I knew it was always the goal but I never really knew it was possible until pretty later on um, you know I had I had friends um, who were really good who were like your previous guest Kendall McIntosh um yeah like he, he was a teammate of mine uh growing up and then to see him you know get looks from some professional teams I was like wow you know maybe that could be me someday but you know at that younger age Kendall was Kendall was like yeah. uh he was a a superhero and uh he was folklore <laughs> um and so you know I knew I was I was good compared to my competition but I never knew what you know what was going to get me to that next level um and so you know I, honestly I don't think you know maybe until college was when I realized you know maybe this is actually a reality because I knew there was guys that I would play against where I'm like you're getting you know you're getting a lot of recognition you're getting a lot of love you're talking about playing professionally and I'm better than you you know and yeah. I think you have to have that mentality if you want to get to the next level just knowing that you're better than someone or you have to prove it because at the end of the day, I wasn't getting a lot of recognition or looks or recruitment. And so I was the only one who had to keep that in my head. Hey, you're good enough. It's just not right now. And so, yeah. you know, it just, it wasn't until, you know, middle of college when I actually realized, Hey, maybe, maybe I can actually do this and make it happen professionally. No, oh, man, it's great to hear that. Cause you stuck with it. And, you know, sometimes it's as an athlete, some people who, or athletes in general, they don't know if they can make it that far, you know. They yeah. say, like, maybe it is and maybe it's not, but when they have the opportunity, they have to take that, you know, they can't take it for granted. Yeah. Um, so what obstacles did you have with your athletic career so far, like, professionally? Like, was it hard to make it to the professional level? Um, yeah. Was it hard before that um, playing in college or even playing now? Like, how tough was it for you? Yeah, yeah. Um there's been a lot of obstacles. Um, you know, growing up, I played for just my local club uh, called Bay Oaks. And, you know, at the time there was no academy and I was just playing with guys from Oakland and from the, um, the East Bay. And, um, you know, there was very little looks from colleges. Um, and so I was struggling just to get a scholarship offer my junior year of high school. And then, Finally, my dad kind of pushed me a little bit to to play with her in academy, and I went and tried that out. And after one training, I, my life was changed, just the professionalism of it. Um, I was like, I need to do this. And so um, with the goal of playing college soccer, obviously I had that professional goal away in the distance, but my immediate goal at the time was to play college soccer. And, you know, I wasn't even getting really recruited because uh, I was just playing for my local club. And yeah. then, so the first obstacle was just to get recruited. And so I had to put myself out there a little bit, drive an hour to practice either way, a few times a week, do homework in the car. Um, and that was just to get an opportunity to play in college. Um, yeah. And then, you know, college was a great four years. I was lucky <laughs> enough to spend three of those years with you. Um, freshman year, I came in, we were like the seventh ranked recruiting class in the country. And we didn't win a, a WCC championship until my senior year. And so, you know, I just thought, oh, we're coming in with talent. We're going to win. Yeah. But it takes a lot more than talent to win. Um, and then, you know, after my senior year season, um, there was definitely – I was definitely had that feeling that I want to go pro after this. You know, I just finished yeah. my senior year. If there's any time to go pro, it's now. Um, so I went to the earthquakes combine, 
was on the MLS combine list. Um, I didn't really know whether or not I would get drafted. I had the hope of it, but yeah, draft came and went, didn't get drafted. So that, you know, I was a little upset about that just because it always been, you know, a little bit of a dream of mine to get drafted, didn't get drafted. Um, but, you know, this, the same desire to play professionally was still there. So then the mindset changes. Now, what do I need to do to reach the goal now that, you know, a draft is in the past? Um, and so some time passed and I went on trial. I thought, OK, well, the next the next best thing is to go on trial. So I went on yeah. trial yeah. with um, who was it? It was um, what's their name? Charlotte Independence. Um, in North Carolina. And this was during, I think, spring break. And so I just came off of winter quarter. And you know winter quarter, you know, a lot of just hanging out, partying. Um, but I was still trying to stay in shape because I still had that goal. I wanted to play yeah. professionally, you know. So I was trying to stay in shape and trying to train, but it was hard because I was training with the Santa Clara team that I wasn't a part of anymore because I had yeah. finished my eligibility. Um, so I went to that trial and I got my, my butt handed to me. Um, I just thought I could come in and, and play off talent alone. And yeah. I really, you know, I had, I had friends and peers who I considered that I was, you know, on the same level with, if not better than playing in the USL. And so I thought, oh, I can just walk into a trial and I'll be fine. And I went into that trial during uh, spring break and I was like, damn, like these are some real professionals and this is a, yeah. a, a big jump. And so that, you know, was a little bit more of a reality check. And I came back to school, finished school. And it was like a few weeks before graduation. And I'm thinking I'm about to graduate and, I still don't know what I'm doing after graduation. Like the same desire to play professionally is still there. I still have homies and, and opponents who I played against playing in the USL, playing in the MLS. So I'm like, I've been playing with these dudes my whole life. I'm just as good as you, or I'm better than you. And you're playing exactly. at this level. Like I need to be there, you know? Yeah. And so I knew I, I couldn't, you know, stop there. And so I, um, then, had the opportunity to play for the Timbers PDL team, which is their under 23 team. And I kind of just thought that thought of that a little bit as kind of like one of my last shots. If that didn't work out, I was, you know, maybe going to try overseas. Um, yeah. But I kind of went into that with the mindset of, uh, you know, have fun over the summer playing soccer and see what happens. And, you know, fortunately, I played really well there, had the opportunity to stick around and play for uh, the Timbers 2 USL team. And then they invited me back for preseason. Um, but, you know, the gap between when I finished college and ended up signing my first professional contract was like a year and a half. And so, you know, yeah. at any point during that time, I could have been like, damn, like, you know, just not meant to be. Um, and I could have just gave up. But... I knew I had that, you know, desire to play professionally. I knew I had the ability. I knew I had the talent. And I knew I had the – I think mo most importantly is the drive. If you want something, you got to go get it. you got to dedicate your life to it. And so once once I kind of got those reality checks and also once – so uh, when I got the reality check with that trial and then once I – I played really well for the PDL team, they invited me to stick around and train with the USL team. Those yeah. trainings were – that was another like, damn, like, okay, like this is, a, this is the level that I need to be at. And not just like for a little bit, this is every day. Like when you mess up, you're getting an earful, especially as a dude who's just there, you know, on trial or just there as a practice player. If you mess up, you miss a pass, you don't get your timing right. Like you're getting an earful and trying to like, I was a new kid, like trying to impress people and just like, yeah you know, make friends, <laughs> uh, that was, you know, a really good experience, but that also just, you know, playing against those guys every day, not only did it, it let me know how high that level was, but it also, once again, made me realize I can compete at this level. Yeah. I might need to dedicate more time to, you know, getting fitter, getting sharper, getting better, you know, technically, but I can play at this level. It just, I need to, you know, dedicate 
myself physically and mentally to get there. Um, and then once, so then once I signed my first contract in 2016, um, I mean, there's been a couple obstacles along the way. Like my first year, I wasn't starting the whole, I mean, being on the MLS two team, a lot of times they would drop first team guys down. So I wasn't starting the whole first half of the season, but being my first year, I was just like happy to be on the bench. <laughs> But that's the thing. That's how competitive it, it can be is is a lot of times you're not playing for a starting spot. You're playing for a spot in the 18. Like you're trying to play well yeah. in training just so you can make the roster. Yeah. And so my first year, I was just happy to be there. But I wasn't I wasn't playing my first year. So that was a bit of a setback. And then I got to play that first year. And then – uh in our first or second week of off season training, I, uh, what happened? I went into a tackle and broke my foot and they, it was kind of misdiagnosed. And so I didn't end up getting surgery until like two months after the initial injury. And I was out for another five or six months after that. And so that was a major obstacle coming back from injury. You know, anyone who comes back from injury, I tip my hat off to because damn that is it's it's very difficult physically it's difficult just because just because they say you're cleared and you can play that doesn't mean you're like oh I'm back to normal like it takes so much time to get back to that like peak level of where you were before that injury and so that was an obstacle and then mentally going through that was really difficult as well just never had surgery never been out for like more than you know, a month or two. And so that was really difficult just to mentally get over that. Um, but here I am, I made it. And uh, all those obstacles, you know, are just learning lessons and, you know, opportunities to grow and get better and, and learn from it. No, that's awesome, man. Because at the end of the day, like you said, you do learn from all these things that you go through. And it yeah. could have gone left, you know, where you could have been injured and then not been able to play but you stuck with it and you kept going or also mentally, you know, yeah. mentally has helped you immensely. You know, like your mental now is at a state where like no one can break you down, which is great to see because some athletes have that. They get pushed around. They get told by coaches, this and that. And mentally yeah. they're not strong, you know, they're weak. And that yeah. doesn't make them that player that they want to become, you know? Yeah. I think, I think men the mental side of the game and just kind of, people's approach to the game is is definitely underappreciated there's so many kids that are talented but you know the second they get criticism or the, the second they have a bad game or a bad touch you know their abilities which are usually so high when they're confident just goes out the window and so I yeah. think you know if I could harp on anything just the mental side of the game is so important yeah that helps a lot too I mean yeah. you also you also spoke about being injured so a lot of kids who get injured coming back, you know, they're not strong and they feel yeah. weak. They don't know what to do. But so, like, I, I congratulate you, too, because coming from an injury is tough, you know. Thanks, and, it's, and it's crazy to see, but you made it so far. And that's awesome, man. Playing four years already for the Timbers, I mean, that's great. You know, your parents must be happy. It's, I mean, I'm happy, bro, <laughs> seeing my boy play over there. It's amazing, you know. Um, Thanks, but bro. how was the transformation for you? playing center mid you know you're playing center mid and now you're playing yeah. center back I mean that's I yeah. probably have a doubt that you're you were playing center mid at one point now playing center back now you can see the whole field but how was that like how was that for you um it I mean I'm I'm definitely like a lot more comfortable now than I was the first time obviously but um you know there's still there's still things that I'm learning about the position um but I think you know having that um being comfortable on the ball um, is very um, is nice to transition back there just because a lot of times you have the ball at your feet because yeah. you initiate the offense a lot. And so being comfortable in that position, I think is really important. So that has transitioned over. Well, not being the last line of defense is definitely weird. Like I used to think like, Oh, like if I get beat in the middle, like I got my center backs to help me out. And now it's like, if you mess up at center back, whether it be like you're just dribbling around or like you just give a nonchalant pass, like <laughs> it's coming right back at you. Yeah. And so, you know, the 
the um, the room for error, a lot of times you, you have to be a little bit more risk averse playing center back just because if you do, you know, mess up, yeah. it's coming, it's coming back at you hot. But um, I think one of the things that's helped me out about playing center mid before is just having that confidence on the ball range of passing, I think is really important. Just being able to spray the ball side to side. Um, I, I try and kind of be a center mid playing center back, you know, um, you know, be a facilitator, be a distributor, all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, there's still stuff that I'm learning every day um, that I think I can improve on. And, you know, it's been a little weird because sometimes I would go back and forth between the two positions, but I think yeah. now I'm there a lot more. So I'm a little more comfortable and it's pretty fun. It's pretty fun playing center back, but. <laughs> I was going to ask, which, which one's your favorite position? <sighs> well, if you can say, you know. I think, I mean, it's kind of a cop out, but it depends on, <laughs> depends on who you're playing, you know, like if you're playing a team where like they got two, six, four forwards and they're just whipping in crosses all day. Like I might want to be playing center mid that game, you know, <laughs> but, uh, but seriously, I mean, ah, I don't know. I, I think I've come to like center back. I enjoy yeah. it. It's, it's a good one. Yeah. It's That's fun. good to hear, though, because it makes you versatile, you know. Some players who go into different positions, you know, they go in, they don't want to do it. Yeah. You know, some players go in from being a forward to a mid or, like, you a mid to a center back, and, you know, they don't they do not do well. And yeah. And can't succeed, you know. It could have been some, some with you where you went to center back and you weren't able to adjust, you know. But luckily you were, and look where you are now. So that's great to hear, man. <laughs> Um, Thanks, on to the next question. What motivates you or what still motivates you now to be that player that you want to be 110% on the field, be the player off the field as well to your teammates? I mean, everything. I see you on the um, Timbers 2 page all the time. Like, it's great to see that, you know? So, like, what makes you, like, what motivates you to become, like, the yeah. match that you are now, like, the player that you want to be? Um, I think – Something, I mean, that's been pretty consistent along the way throughout kind of my journey and I think is just super important in life is is to have goals, but to not not be content once you once you reach those goals. And so I think what's motivate what continues to motivate me is once you reach a goal, the what's the next goal? You know, you can't be yeah. satisfied with that first goal. If I was satisfied with my first goal of being a professional soccer player and just, you know, making the 18 my first year, I don't know if I would be in the league right now, you know, because there's someone coming up right now who's, you know, younger and I don't, I want to say hungrier because I'm hungry, but you know, very <laughs> hungry coming up looking for your spot. And so, if you don't have a what's the next goal, then you're just going to be stagnant and you have to constantly be improving, um, you know, to one better yourself, but make sure that you don't get someone coming up behind you. Um, yeah. And so I think what's super important is just is to be I think it's important to reflect on how far you've come when you reach these goals and to be happy in that moment. And definitely celebrate success. I think it's super important to celebrate success. But once you reach a goal, figure out what's the next goal. Because, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, we're all, I mean, we're, we're all constantly striving for goals. And once you reach them, then what are you going to do once you reach the goal? You're just going to sit around and, and just loathe in it? I mean, you could. But I think it's more fun to continue to strive for bigger and better things. And so I think, uh, yeah, I just think it's important to continue to set new goals once you reach them. No, yeah, I like that because, like you said, you either stay at the same level or you want to become better than where you are now. And, yeah. I mean, that goes to my next question. Like, what do you what do you see yourself next or where do you see yourself next? Like, um, your next goal, I mean. Of yeah. course, you want to play for the first team, you know, but what it what like what's your next goal right now? As of now, I mean, the COVID nineteen, of course, is not right. helping, but um, right. Um, yeah, I mean, you kind of you kind of said it a little bit. I would say the I mean, long term, short term, kind of long term goal is 
is make the first team play in MLS. I think that's, yeah. I mean, that's been a goal of mine since I was a little kid is, yeah, I play professional soccer, but the, the secondary question when I was in like elementary school is like, oh, what do you want to do? I'd say play professional soccer. And they're like, oh, well, MLS. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and that's when they would hit me with the like, oh, soccer's not that popular. And I'm like, it's growing. And now it's like, it's at the point where like, you could be living a good life playing in MLS. And, yeah. um, and so, yeah, I would, I mean, that's the next goal, long term or kind of big goal, but to get to that goal, I could have a bunch of, you know, smaller goals that could be starting every, every USL game this season, like yes, being sir. a leader on my team, um, being an impact player, you know, five shutouts, 10 shutouts, um, yeah. You know, those kind of things are what's driving me right now with the goal of I want to go up a level. I want to play in the MLS. Um, but to get there, I can set a bunch of these smaller goals um, within kind of my season right now to ideally get to that next goal. No, it's great to hear, man. And I hope you achieve those goals. I mean, once this pandemic ends, I hope, like, you get there. I mean, I've always been rooting for you since college days, since Deanza days. The, the days. The old days, man. So it's good to hear that you're still doing well. And hopefully I get to see you on that big screen with the, the first team. So that's good, man. Thanks, um, So on to the next question. Who do you give, like, credit to, um, like, your success? Who can you give your success to? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I know you're really close with your family. I mean, same yeah. like me. So, um yeah question. I, I mean I think we're both really similar in that we rely on our family a ton um and so I definitely have to give you know my family a lot of that credit um not only I mean if it wasn't for my older sister I don't even know if I would be playing soccer um and then on top of that um you know even right now I was gonna say like driving you to countless games practices all that stuff um, but also kind of the motive, a little bit of motivation behind that is my mom played professional tennis and my dad played uh, college basketball and baseball. And so they were both like good athletes, really good athletes. And so growing up, I would always hear my mom talk about like, oh, I played pro tennis. My dad like, oh, I played D1 basketball and baseball. So like <laughs> it was a little bit of like, yeah, this is cool. But like I'm trying to I got to. I'm trying to level up on mom and dad, you know, <laughs> like, yeah, I, I want to be able to talk a little smack to them. Um, but no, in all honesty, I mean, family is really what drives me. And I'm super fortunate. Like whenever we go on any, any uh, away game, our, uh, our admin always comes up to me asking if I need tickets because I mean, I could, I don't know if my parents missed more than, like two or three games last year out of like 30 33 wow. and like you know that's talking about texas freaking oklahoma um washington like all over the place la and so just kind of knowing how much you know they enjoy it and how much um it has brought joy to them really is motivation for me to keep going and try and make the most of it um just seeing how happy it makes them is, is very fulfilling for me. Oh, yeah. As a player, I think it's very important to have that support, especially for those from those who love you, you know, the, the most. Yeah. And like, like you said before, like myself, same thing, you know. Our families are our backbone. And yeah. without them, you know, they – I mean, they give us the worst criticism, but they also give us the best, you know. So it's I, I, saw, um, I saw that picture of you and your dad um, before the, the game – um, oh, yeah. and that was that hit me I was like damn that's that's Ed and his dad in a nutshell like that's dope very dope oh no, yeah it's, it's good to have that and it's good to see other players that also have that type of relationship with their families you know because you know when it's a hard time or when you're not playing well or you're not playing at all or even when you were injured like you had that person to talk to your mom yeah. your dad, or like your sister like you said she had that big impact in your life where hey, like, keep going, you know, if it wasn't for yeah. her too, like, you would not be playing. Yeah. Um, kind of kind of going off that, I remember a little inside story. Last year, <laughs> we were on, like, a tough 
I think like a tough losing skid and like I was, I came home after a game and like I was just sitting outside by myself and like my sister came over and like I just started crying to her because like I knew I was just so bummed about like losing these games in a row and how much it meant to me and like my sister was right there for me and got me better in like a second but you know how to it being alone in those times is hard and I'm very fortunate to have my sister right down the street and my parents close by and so you know they've helped me a lot through this process for sure no yeah most definitely having that support being right there right behind you one phone call away you know that's always great yep um next question so what has been the best you know goal you scored or like the best game you played or like what's that memory you can say like damn I remember that like it was yesterday you know like yeah. what memory stands out to you where it's like hey yeah. remember that time or like yeah you, scored a goal, you know yeah I mean you know there's so many goals I've scored it's hard to keep <laughs> track <laughs> um <laughs> no um but definitely no I definitely I mean, actually, in honestly, though, honestly, though, like, I haven't scored that many goals, but because the ones I have scored are all like pretty important, like they all have, you know, pretty good meaning to me. Um, yeah. But I'll highlight the one. My first professional goal um, was I had like fifteen to twenty family members in the crowd, and yeah. it was like I was playing center back. And I literally, like, I made a run from center back, like, within our own half on a counter all the way up and ended up, like, I was I was dribbling 1v1 versus their center back. Like, how did that happen? I don't know. Um, <laughs> oh, I guess my sister just said it was Father's Day weekend. Um, but, yeah, I just, I mean, it was my first, prof yeah, first professional goal on Father's Day. Pops was there. Um and that was like, we ended up, that was to go up, what is it, 2 0. We ended up losing 4 3, like, or something like, like, so <laughs> trash. But the fact that I scored my first goal in front of my family was amazing. Oh, Mash just put against Galaxy Dianza playoffs. Oh, that was, that was a legendary, legendary moment. That was, I was just hyped for our team just because our team had, was so close, a bunch of homies and, you know, we beat – that was, like, the team that had uh, so okay. much hype around them. Shout out Nate Smith. I think I, I, I think he was involved in that goal. Um, <laughs> but uh, that was that was a good good shout by Ryan. That was a good one, too, for sure. That's awesome, man. That's great. More goals to come, though, right? <laughs> Hope so, man. Jeez. Um, oh, I only get up there so often. Yeah. <laughs> For our last question, I mean, what advice would you give to your younger self about the journey you've taken, you know? Or, like, for the young kids now growing up who want to be pros. I mean, what – I mean, they heard the obstacles you had to go through, but what last advice would you give them to yourself? Yeah. Um, I mean, if I were to look back and tell myself, I would just say enjoy the journey because I think that a lot of times I would just I would be stressed uh, I was a lot of times just stressed thinking about the future and like am I gonna make it? am I not gonna make it is this you know did I play well enough all this stuff but I think just enjoy the journey if I was just talking to myself if I was you know talking to another younger kid coming up I would just say if you have a goal if you have something that you want to accomplish one dedicate time and energy to that goal because you know hard work is what's going to get you there at the end of the day. And also, you know, don't stop just because there's an obstacle, you know, a lot of time you're going to hit roadblocks, but that doesn't mean it's the end of the journey. A lot of times that's just motivation to one work harder or just go a different route. You know, a, a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of my teammates, you know, some of them signed contracts when they were 17. Uh, some of them were drafted. Um, people come from all over the place. Everyone has a different journey. Everyone has a different timeline, you know? And so just because yours isn't where you dreamt of it being right now, it doesn't mean it's not where it's going to be, you know, five, 10 years down the line. So if you have a goal, stick to that goal and, you know, don't stop till, I mean, just don't stop till you get there. 
Really? I hear you, man. That's great. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Like, of course. You said that your journey hasn't stopped and it won't stop anytime soon. I can't wait to see where you end up in the next year after this COVID-19 ends. Can't wait to see your goals coming up. I mean, I'll be out there cheering for you, you know, already. Um, but I appreciate you, man. I appreciate the time you took out of your day to um, come with us to the Hashtag Let's Kick It series. And um, I wish you the best, man. Of course, baby. Hey, let's kick it in real life soon, I hope. Yes, sir, man. Let's appreciate do it. Appreciate you having me. This is dope. All right, bro. Have a good one. Say hi to your family for me. All right, bro. You too. Well, guys, thank you again for those who have joined. I appreciate it. Um, come back next week.